Professor. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your presence in every, uh, every one of us, our, our rooms and uh, homes, which you are with us, Lord, always. I commit this time, Holy Spirit, to you, I acknowledge you as the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my mouth and let your words go forth, not in my own human wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and power that the faith of your people will rest in you and your power and go forth and accomplish what you purpose in the lives of your children here this morning and not return to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, praise the Lord. Okay, so today's it's very exciting. Okay, it's not something that we thought we know, right? Because the Holy Spirit has so many uh, wonderful truths and the realities of the kingdom of God, the heavenly realm for us. Why you never, you, you will never ever need to worry about tomorrow again. It's like super strong, right? How did I come up with such a strong title? <laughs> okay. That you will never, why? Okay. You will never ever, never ever need to worry about tomorrow again. Let's see from the word of God. You like this? To never ever have to worry about tomorrow. Okay, because let's see what God says in his word. And this is what will happen like right just now, even uh, Evelyn Go was sharing her testimony, right? That she has, you know, uh, really been experiencing the peace of God. Yes, more and more. After today's uh, message from the Lord, you know that it's, <laughs> it's really final, okay? You never ever need to, why there is a reason. Okay, let's, uh, let's continue, okay? The <clears throat> maybe a passage that some of you are familiar with, but today you will see something, I believe you have never seen before because I also never saw it before, all right? But it's in the word, okay? And by the way, welcome, Lillian. <laughs> so nice to see you with us today. And of course, uh, Uncle Ling, Uncle T, right? I think you're around here. Eh? It's a pit. And also uh, Sister Or, right, in the uh, US. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. This is about Jesus, huh? Jesus said, this is why I tell you to never be worried about your life. For all that you need will be provided, such as food, water, clothing, everything your body, body needs. Isn't there more to your life than a meal? Isn't your body more than clothing? <clears throat> so one of the things we need to know is about life, right? Before we go further, okay? From the Bible, remember for uh, some of you who are new, no problem. It's lovely to be a spiritual baby. <laughs> you just get to drink milk, you know, and milk very easy, just swallow, right? But sometimes we all uh, who are older also need to drink milk, right? Milk that has a lot of protein inside also, <laughs> okay? Today you have everything. Okay, life, all right? Uh, in, so the, the, the Bible has a uh, two parts, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament. So the Old Testament is written in originally in Hebrew and the New Testament is in Greek. So what we have, English is called a translation and as well as Chinese or uh, Khmer or Cambodian, whichever language, all right? So they are translated from the original languages of Hebrew and Greek. So some of the uh, meaning different languages, all right? So our English cannot capture the uh, the, the richness of the Greek and Hebrew language. So this, why, this, uh, this is in uh, Greek because it's in New, in New Testament. So from there, we find out what is the uh, real meaning of the, the, the word that has been translated in English as life. In Greek, it is actually called suke. All right? Suke, which means the breath of life. All right? A living soul, 
uh, about the, it's the, it's the seed of feelings, it's like the heart and the soul. So we, we understand from the teaching, all right, that man is three, tri, uh, three part, okay? So there is a spirit, soul, and body. So here, the life, all right, that Jesus is talking about is suke, right? So it's the human soul. The, it's referring to, but it has been translated as life. So there are actually three, three, three types, uh, three uh, Greek words for life, but only all translated into English as life. <laughs> See, we, we lose the, the meaning of that, all right, in the translation. So here, when Jesus was talking about, do not worry about life, okay, this life is talking about the soul area, the soul part of life, okay? So uh, it's offered to, uh, you know, uh, human soul, that God can attain the highest end and secure eternal blessedness, the soul regarded as moral being designed for everlasting life. Okay, so the soul is one part of your uh, being, which is the will, the mind, and the emotions. Okay, so this part of you, all right, that God said, you know, about, Jesus said about your life, all right, do not worry about your life. That is, it's talking about your soul area. Yeah. Okay, so there are three Greek words for life. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, all, all uh, translated as one word life. So we, 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 didn't, we don't know the whole meaning. Okay, so uh, in the New Testament, there's bios, there is suke, and there is zoe. So this is where uh, our Evelyn Zoe took the one, the third one. Okay, so three, uh, bios, suke, and zoe. Okay, so the Greek word, translated as life in uh, Luke 18, 14, another verse, okay, is about, you know, that that which fell on thorns, those uh, hurt go away, I mean, the word of God that dropped onto thorns about the heart, Jesus was talking in another context, choking by anxiety, choked by anxieties and riches and pleasures of this life, and do not bring any fruit to it. That means uh, the word everyone here, but it falls onto uh, uh, thorns, okay, the heart, where right, that is choked with, anxieties and riches so you hear for a while it sounds good but it doesn't benefit okay because it was choked by all the anxieties so bios here the word life was is referring to bios life <laughs> okay the life of the uh, physical body okay so the physical body all right will not receive the life because choked by the mind the uh, anxieties all right and you know that Later on, I'll explain where are the worries and anxieties? Which part are they present in our whole being? Okay, so this is the bios, the life of the physical body. So the English word biology comes from bios, which is the Greek word. Okay. All right, the other one is suke. All right, this Greek word translated as soul life in Matthew 18.25 is suke. So whoever wants to save his soul life or suke shall lose it. Whoever loses his soul life or suke for my sake shall find it. So suke refers to the psychological life of the human soul. That is the mind, the emotion, and the will. Okay, so this is the soul life. Just now you have bios life, which is the physical life. All right, so the English word psychology comes from suke. Okay, then the third word that uh, always translated life, okay, is zoe, all right? The Greek word translated as life in John chapter 1 verse 4 is zoe. In him was life and the life was the light of man. Now, this is the divine life. This zoe refers to the uncreated eternal life of God, the divine life uniquely possessed by God. So, only God has this divine life. All right, and it's in the spirit, so it's Zoe, it's eternal, okay? So it's the life of God, which we all receive when we got born again or received Jesus into our heart. So remember the three, three lives, okay? Bios life, <laughs> easy to remember for most of you, all right? The physical one, and then Suke, the soul mind, okay? The, the, the soul soul life, right? The will, the mind, the emotions. And then Zoe, which is the spirit life. Okay, so you have spirit, soul, and body here also. <laughs> okay, in terms of life. Okay. 
Okay, let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Look at all the birds. Jesus said, do you think they worry about their existence? They don't plant or reap or store up food. Yet your heavenly father okay, provides them with food. So Jesus said, just have a look at the uh, birds. Aren't they much more valuable to your father than they? Okay, so to us, all right, human, all right, uh, especially today, we are called children of God after we have received Jesus. And when we are children, there is a father, right? So God has become our heavenly father. Okay, so which of you by worrying could add anything to your life? So remember, what is this life just now, right? It's the suke, okay, which is the soul life. All right, so worrying is associated to the soul life to the thoughts, okay, the mind. So Jesus was talking about, do not worry, okay, because the worry, where do you worry? Anyone never worried before? <laughs> okay, so everyone worry, right? So where is the worry? Worry are in the form of troubled thoughts, right? Okay, you worry about your children's education, you worry about the pandemic today. Today, everyone in the world is all is like, you know, not spared for worry, right? Because you don't know whether you have you lose your job or money, or you will get COVID-19, the vaccination work or not work. Okay, all these thoughts are called worries where you don't have peace, okay, and you are just, you know, sometimes worry until cannot eat, cannot sleep, okay? But all the worries come from thoughts. And where are they? If Jesus said that, this is, uh, by worrying, could you add anything to your soul life? Which means to your, uh, to your mind, the peace of your mind, okay? The, the, the soul area. So you, you, if the, the, this soul all right, area is supposed to contain thoughts, right? So these thoughts that are, you know, trouble and all that, will not give you a healthy soul mind, <laughs> which is what God intended for us, spirit, soul, and body. So we have the peace in our hearts, all right, because that is when we receive the Zoe life. Then after that, we have the soul life, okay, which is our mind. So in Christ, we are also, what God has given us is also peace here, all right? It's also a healthy whole soul life. That means God didn't intend for us just to have peace in our heart, but peace in our soul area, our minds, in the top area. That's why Jesus said, when this life is uh, uh, the correct one, should be soul life, suke. Okay, so worrying is in the, in the soul area, and Jesus is referring to our soul life. Okay? Okay, so why would you worry about your clothing, all right? Look at all the beautiful flowers of the field and what they don't uh, toil. Not even Solomon in all his splendor has was robed in beauty more than any one of these. So if God so clothed the meadow with hay, which is here for a short time and then dried up and burned, won't he provide for you the clothes that you need, even though you live uh, with such little uh, faith? So Jesus was just, was just telling us about you know, that our God is our Heavenly Father. If you can take care of the, the, the birds, the sparrows, and the, the, the flowers, all right, then even, you know, they, they are cloaked very beautifully, uh, but more than Solomon's glory. So for those of you who don't know who is Solomon, King Solomon uh, is in the Old, Old Testament, right, was the richest king, right, God blessed him. Uh, so rich, richer, today they are uh, Fox or whatever reported that he is the, you know, the most richest, if you can count his riches, right? So God can make a person rich. There's nothing, no problem with that. So he was the son of King David. So if, if, if Jesus was just saying that, you know, God is greater, all right? <clears throat> and he'll take care of us. So then forsake your worries. Okay, so knowing is telling us how good God is, all right? That he will definitely provide for you whatever you we need. Okay, so... This is one of the areas why we worry about pandemic and we worry about money. It's all actually all about the, you know, the physical life on this earth. Okay, because money promises food on the table and supposed to take away fear. Fear also is in the mind. Okay, so forsake. If there's anything you need to forsake, it says forsake your worries. Okay, 
we're coming to more exciting part, all right? So why would, why would you say, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear, all right? These are just basic necessities of life and we don't, may not worry directly into it, but the indirect worrying about our job, you know, that, that, that will actually, the, 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 the underlying reason we worry about the job or losing job or, or money is because of all this. Because if you lose your job or your business or income, at the end of the day, there's no food to put on the table and you will die, right? Starve to death, okay? So then for what, that is what the unbelievers chase after. Because the unbelievers, right, without Jesus, don't have a father, <laughs> spiritual father, okay? Heavenly father. But we are believers. We are the children of God. So we have a heavenly father that takes care of the lilies of the field and the, the birds. Okay, so doesn't your heavenly father already know the things your body require? So remember, here Jesus was not talking about Zoe life, right? He was talking about soul life. That's where the worries come from, all right? And then the soul life, your, your work, God is concerned about each part, every part of us, okay? He doesn't want you to just have Zoe life, all right? The divine life without having the peace of mind and also the body, all right? Being provided for. So there's no way that, you know, there will be no food or uh, no clothing or whatever the, the physical body needs. So the world is very concerned about this but Jesus tells us he doesn't want us to even bother about all this okay because of we have heavenly father who will take care so above all constantly chase after the realm of God's good kingdom so remember I've always shared all right we have spirit soul and body so there are two realms that we are in right now okay but what is uh, visible to you is just the physical realm all right, where we are ruled by our five senses, what you can see, what you can touch, okay, everything that is physical in your room or house now. But we have a spirit, all right, and that is a spiritual realm, which is God's realm, okay? So if God opened our spiritual eyes, we can see angels, maybe see Jesus, right? But that is the, the other realm. But we don't have to, use, we are not we're going to use physical eyes to see that realm. We use faith all right so that is where we have believed in jesus all right and everything is now can be open to us to our understanding okay so jesus says chase after or go after because the world chase after the physical realm right they're only concerned about the body all right every all the needs of the body so it it uh, uh, uh what they call it? jam up the the soul area okay so but Jesus said, now you go into the other realm. If you want to chase anything in life, so somebody said, you know, people say in the world, chase your dreams, huh? chase your, chase the, you know, the success in this world, everything. Ah, the Bible said different, or rather Jesus said different, right? He said, chase after the realm of God's kingdom. Why? Okay. And the righteousness that proceed from him. Because the, uh, the realm outside here, all right, the, the physical realm, all right, in, the, in the Corinthians, it will be what? It can pass away. Everything that is can be touched, can be seen with the physical eyes is temporary. All right, no? one earthquake come also all gone already. <laughs> one fire also, everything gone. All your asset, the, the bank get robbed. So whatever you have also gone already. Put inside the bank or put under the bed. <laughs> like the, our old, you know. Okay, so everything that is here on, on that you can see is temporary. Okay, anything can happen and everything can go away, even your job, right? You can go the next day and then the, the boss can say, Oh, you know, today sorry, you know, don't have. So whatever is in the natural realm is temporary. Okay, so what Jesus is telling us that we have access to the spiritual realm that is eternal. Whatever cannot be seen is eternal. We are eternal beings. All right, your spirit man has been born again the moment you receive Jesus and you enter the spiritual realm where it is eternal. Eternal means forever. Okay, so in this realm, the realm of God's kingdom, what is that? 
and the righteousness that proceed from him. That means his righteousness. But first, let's see what is the realm of God's kingdom. Uh, the rest are less important things. And it says that, you know, these things, less important things will be given to you abundantly. So for many time, for a long time, all right, this verse has been interpreted as you must put God first, okay? Make sure you, you know, pray in the, in the morning, make sure you read your Bible, make sure you go to church. This is what, not, not what Jesus said. <laughs> Wrong interpretation. It's not about putting God first, okay? It is about the realm of God's kingdom that is eternal compared to this physical realm that is temporary. Okay, anything can change, right? So he says, go after the eternal realm, the realm of God's kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these physical realm things, oh, God will take care of you. Hey, Father Robert Lowe, do you take care of your children's uh, needs or not? <laughs> yes, okay. Of course, even an earthly father knows how to take care of the, the children's needs, right? If, if he will let them eat first before he eat, right? He won't want to have his children suffer hunger. So we saw also just now, okay, that, uh, you know, God provided, all right? So Pastor Pierre, I don't have to worry, okay? The Lord can provide, all right? So because he is the heavenly father, right, for his children, all right, even in Cambodia, okay? So this is the natural way God treats his children. <laughs> There's no father so selfish that, you know, I eat first <laughs> and then what left over, I give you it. All right. So our Heavenly Father says the same thing. The only thing is that he asks us not to focus on the temporary realm. He will provide for that. Okay. So the kingdom of God, just now I said, right, chase after, all right, the kingdom of God. So what is the kingdom of God? It is the heavenly realm or the uh, God's realm, the spiritual realm. So the spiritual realm or the kingdom of God in Romans 14 is explained, all right? Scripture interprets scripture, all right? It's not a matter of rules about food and drink. Right? Just now Jesus was saying, I don't worry about the food and the drink and all those kind of things. That is all in the natural realm. Okay, but it's in the realm of the Holy Spirit, okay? Filled with righteousness, peace and joy. So in this realm, Kingdom, God's kingdom realm is about what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so tomorrow I'll be talking and introducing to you the Holy Spirit in the foundation course. Very exciting. Okay, so uh, there is three things, all right, in this realm. His righteousness, peace, and joy. All these are eternal things. Okay, peace, that means you will never lose this peace. Right? What is peace? No more fear, no more all these worrisome thoughts, right? Okay, joy, okay? It's not because everything is fine, not because the, uh, you know, the cases have gone down, no more COVID, right? It's because we have God inside our heart and are protected by Him. So there are many other verses or promises as His children that we have access to and belongs to us. The protection, the love, you know, unconditional love that uh, Evelyn Zoe was, uh, Evelyn uh, Go was talking about just now. So the righteousness, all right, it's not about you do right, then you can be blessed. So everyone in this world talks about do good, get good, all right? Uh, but with God, it's unconditional, not because of us, but because he is good God, all right? Because of Jesus, you believe in Jesus, he has forgiven all your sins, you saw that in communion, and also forgotten, all right? You don't remember them anymore. So for some of you who are new, don't worry, we will uh, go more into that uh, through the foundation uh, series, all right? We'll teach, I'll teach you step by step, right? But roughly, okay, his righteousness means his right standing, the right standing that you and I have as sons and daughters or children of God with him. You know, right standing means just right standing. <laughs> you, you know, that whether you do right or do wrong, all right, that standing is given to you through Christ. It's about his righteousness, okay? So that is one of the definitions. There is another one, all right, that will help you to understand, but I'm not going into that this morning, okay? So understand the realm of the spirit is what Jesus is want us to concentrate on or focus on, all right, which is the realm of God. Peace, joy, these two already 
enough, okay? And his righteousness. So there, remember the life that Jesus was talking here in this context of this scripture, which most of you who have been Christians for a long time are super familiar with, <laughs> okay? So it says, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So uh, I wish you could, this is a class that I can ask you all to answer. Huh? <laughs> okay, but yeah, safe, right? Because today uh, I don't answer, ask questions. Okay, but so Jesus, the correct, uh, the correct translation, or this is in the Greek, okay? That means, remember I told you about the life, it's in the soul area, in your thoughts. So worries is there. So Jesus is saying that in your life, okay, this is the part that he wants to give us, the freedom from worry in the thought, in the soul area. Now, come to the most exciting part. Okay. For the morrow. That means for tomorrow. Okay. That's the old English. So it says, don't, uh, don't put all these thoughts of worries for tomorrow. Okay. Let's see what is that. Okay. No thought. The thought means... Uh, Mary Ma, okay, so do not be anxious or troubled with cares. So all the trouble and anxiety is all inside the thought. The thought that tells you what, what COVID-19, go outside very dangerous, you know, can get the virus or, you know, can die, no, can lose job, no money. Okay, all these anxious thoughts, okay, are all in the soul area. And this is the main, main concern today, la, I think, for everyone in the world. So the trouble, the cares, all inside your thoughts. Okay, now, the next one. It says, take no thought for the morrow, for tomorrow. So what is tomorrow? This is the general uh, from the dictionary of what is the meaning of tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow is the day after today. <laughs> English lesson. Okay, so that is what tomorrow in English means. The day after today. So tomorrow, the day after today is what? Sunday, today is Saturday. So I'll see you tomorrow, okay? So normally, before we finish, I'll say that I'll see you tomorrow. That means the day after today. Now, remember, this is a translation, okay? So what we are reading when Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow is an English translation. So let's look at what tomorrow means, actually, what Jesus was saying, okay? In, when he was talking to the, uh, disciples. Ah, maybe let me explain a little bit more about the, the tomorrow, uh, the day after tomorrow first. So when you're there, it's also inside, uh, you know, all over the, the, the uh, it's also another verse there. When your friend comes to explain to you what's tomorrow, it's in the day after today. So when your friend comes to ask you for a favor, why would you say perhaps tomorrow when you have the money right here in your pocket? So help him today. So this is the today and tomorrow understanding of tomorrow okay so but the one just now uh okay this is the one uh the tomorrow in this verse of the day after tomorrow that is a uh, ma matcha uh, no moka 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 okay all right so that is the one day after tomorrow maka okay so now we have the the one that Jesus is talking about for tomorrow. Now, this tomorrow is not Maka, which is the day after today. The one that Jesus was talking about, do not take, take no thought for tomorrow. This tomorrow is the Greek word called, is the Greek word Orion. It's not Maka, all right? Maka is the day after today. It's Orion, okay? Orion means... A breeze, morning air. Right? This morning we sang the song, right? This is the air I breathe. Okay? So, what is Jesus saying? He's not referring to the day after today, which we all think about, you know? Okay, today, our team already finished already. Now, I'm thinking about tomorrow, how? <laughs> tomorrow, Robert Lowe will say tomorrow about to cook, you know? And, uh, you know, and all, all the worries okay, about the day after today. But when Jesus talks about don't worry, he's not referring to the day after today. He's talking, right? Take no thought for 
Arion. Okay, Arion is the breeze, the air, the morning air. We getting revelation. Okay, fresh. Okay, because tomorrow, according to Jesus, the air. Right? Don't worry about the air. <laughs> Don't worry about the air. It's not worry about the day after today. Okay, take no thought. About that, have you all, all think about air before you're worried tomorrow got air or, not, or today got air or not to breathe? You just breathe, right? Okay, let's take a deep breath. Hmm. Okay, this is the air that God has given us. You have to pay for it. Maybe if you want a different type of air, you have to pay for it. Uh -huh. But the natural air that is given to the, the plants and, the, and the, you know, the lilies as, as well as the birds, okay, it is the morning breeze. And you just automatically breathe it in every day. Okay? All right? Every day. It's, it's the morning air. Okay? So, it's fresh. Okay? Those of you who wake up early in the morning. Okay? Fresh, right? You love uh, Joan, right? Wake up early. What do you go to the corridor? You go to the outside. Mm -hmm. Everything is fresh, right? The dew is on the flowers, on the leaves, right? This is what Jesus is talking about. Take no thought about the air. The breeze is supposed every every moment of the day, every moment of our lives is like a breeze. Like a morning air is fresh. This is the meaning of the word Arion. It's not the day after today. Okay? That is matcha. Okay? So uh comes from the word uh yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay, that's how I pronounce our air, our air. Okay, the phonetic is how to pronounce, helps us to and how to pronounce the Greek. So it is the air, particularly the lower and dense air, as distinguished from the higher and rarer air in the atmospheric region. So the origin is to breathe unconsciously. Huh? Every of you breathe consciously or not? I am breathing now. <laughs> you just unconsciously breathe. You are created like that, you know, the heart, the lungs, just breathe. Because this is the goodness of God, right? You're alive, okay, right? Because you can breathe. The moment you no more breathe, how do they test whether a person died already or not? <laughs> they see, hmm, they I think touch here, right? See a lot of uh, detective show, right? They, they check, right? After someone died already. Check here, right? See, got breathe, breathing, no more breathing, die already. But today we are live, we are alive, right? So we are breathing. Okay, so this breath of air is free. God never, you know, put it into a, a box and then after that say, okay, you have to pay for it because, uh, <laughs> you know, I created this universe and air is very pricey, okay? Because without air, we die. The life, okay? Jesus gave the goodness of God. You think, oh, this is the unconditional love of God. So it is to everyone, whether believer or not believer, God love humanity. All right, so it is free. <laughs> One of the things that is free and taken for granted, okay? But even take for granted, God do not, uh, you know, uh, blame us for that. You know, he just loves us and give you air to breathe. The One moment you want to kill a person, it's just about how many minutes you don't give him air, they die already, right? Very easy, what you call suffocate. See how we are dependent on this air that we breathe. So it's, Jesus is saying, all right, this air, Arion, okay. Take no thought for your air. Why would you want to worry about air? It's already given to you free of charge. You don't even conscious, not even conscious of it. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> so wonderful, our heavenly Father. So Jesus said, in TPD, of course, they translate it. All right. To you know, the, so all the translations still got it wrong. Okay. Refuse to worry about tomorrow, but deal with each challenge it come, that comes your way one day at a time. This is the closest lah, one day at a time because they still translate it as matcha, as a day. Okay, so that's why I say live one day at a time. And then everybody said, I cannot live one day at a time. <laughs> you know, the soul area because the natural tendency of fallen man is to worry, okay, about especially what we think as the next day, the tomorrow. Okay, so this is not very correct. 
okay, the correct is just that we are created eternal. And this, no one worries about air. Instead, take no thought about air, <laughs> about grief. It is fresh. All right? Lamentation in the Bible says the faithful love. Yeah, building God, the unconditional love of God never ends. His mercies never cease. So there is no ending to the goodness of God. As long as you look at air, you will know that God is merciful. You know, God is uh, this one, but we are not conscious of air, right? We just know it's there. Every day you wake up, you breathe. You don't, you sleep also have to breathe, right? Nobody stop breathing when they go to sleep. <laughs> okay? Because this is the way that God takes care of us. His mercies. That means what? Mercy is we know not getting the bad that we deserve. Right? That is why we love Jesus so much and love God because his mercies, he loved us. He didn't give us what we deserve. We were all in sin. We deserve punishment. But God is so good. He still gave us air. <laughs> and, you know, his faithfulness, he don't punish us. He punished Jesus who took our punishment on, uh, on behalf of us on the cross. His mercies begin when? Afresh every morning okay so it's all fresh that's what we call fresh air so fresh air is available to everyone nobody think about it right so i say to myself the lord was the verse after that so when you understand the mercies of god the goodness of god then we can speak to ourselves so this is part of meditation and confession that i teach you in the foundation class right if we can speak to ourselves if you don't speak to ourselves the, the devil speak to you, <laughs> okay? The world will speak to you. And then they speak everything contrary to what God speaks. So speak to ourselves what? The word of God, all right? You take the word and you speak to yourself, okay? So the Lord is my inheritance, therefore I will hope in him. So when, uh, uh, also written by uh, King Solomon, right? Says that, okay, I know uh, the mercies of God are, are fresh every morning and he is my inheritance. The Lord is your inheritance, not what your father gave you or what you, 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 know, you collected from this earth. The Lord, okay? Because he's self-sufficient. He's all-sufficient. He is God, all right? So just depend on him, just like you depend on air to breathe, <laughs> okay? Therefore, I hope in him. I depend in him. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. All right, this is a prophecy from Prophet Jeremiah. Thoughts of peace, you see, God also think, all right? Of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. All right, this is in uh, what is expected end. So everyone, or some have translated it as future. Okay, let's see what actually this expected end means, right, in the Hebrew. Old Testament now Hebrew. Expected means uh, it's a cord. You know, the cord that connects. Today, there's no cord, but in uh, the, the understanding of the word cord means that it's connected one end to the other end. So when you are connected to Jesus, you, you have a cord, all right? That's connected there. So that means <laughs> what? It's, it's already ended. <laughs> okay, you know where you are connected to, where your supply is where the electricity comes from, okay? What is the ending, all right? So the cord already connect you, that's Jesus, already connected us to God, okay? So we have our, our hope, our expectation, is no, the, the what we call future, okay, I will have you to understand this, and you never have to worry about this word future again, okay? So expectation, the end, the expected end, all right? That is what God already done for every child of his, all right, and the Bible already tells us what is our ending. Okay, so let's see what is our ending. Right, the world had to go to, uh, what do you call that, um, fortune tellers to find out what is their future, what is their ending. Okay, so we don't have to go to fortune tellers. The Bible already tells us your fortune. <laughs> okay, and your ending, because the fortune actually what you want is the ending, right? Will you marry this guy? Will you be rich? Will you be poor? You know? Hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, not the Sarah here, okay? So, your Bible tells us very clearly what is your expected end. That's why it says thoughts of peace, 
Okay, the thoughts of peace, same as what Jesus said, okay, in your soul, mind. And Peter also talked about it. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, right, that he may exalt you in due time. So here, he's talking about all those worries and concerns, okay, about the future, about, uh, you know, what will happen to you, okay, whether it's a sickness or whether it's poverty or lack or all those things that go into the soul area. But before that, verse casting all your care upon him for he cares for you, right, there is this part where Peter says, humble yourself. That means just, you know, depend on God. You know, what is right, right, is depend on yourself, right? Okay, so humility is I depend on him. I trust in him, just like I breathe the air. Or anyone wake up and then, I think I, today I want to breathe this air. <laughs> you know, let, let me go somewhere and breathe another type of air. No, right? You just take it in. All right. So God wants us to do like that with Him. All right. To trust Him and just rely on Him, on His goodness. So we need to understand. All right. How good God is. And the only way you can understand is from His Word, from His will, from the Bible that He is like a, you know, a, uh, a love uh, love note, all right, to us. Okay, so he says, what? Under the mighty hand of God. So he tells us that God is mighty, all right? That he may exalt you in due time. We need to understand about time, okay? For us on this earth, right? Remember the two realms, physical realm and the eternal realm or the spiritual realm. So in the physical realm, we are in this uh, time zone, okay? Where we have, past, present, future, all divided by time. Yeah, yesterday, today, tomorrow. Uh, okay, that's how we see things in this realm. Hmm? That's how we divide what we call time. So this due time, all right, it means a definite time, right? God will exalt you in a definite time, all right? A fixed and definite time. So, that's why we can cast all our cares on him. Why sometimes we are so worried is we want we are impatient, right? We want now, 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 now. <laughs> okay, now, now I want the you know uh, the, the the whatever it is uh, the the increment or the, the job, the guarantee. So we sign contract, everything because we want now to see, because we, we are still in this physical realm where seeing is believing, right? If I, I see it, I, I believe. If not, I won't believe. Okay, right? So, but Bible tells us, our Apostle Peter tells us that in due time, right, you will be exalted, you'll be ele elevated or promoted or, you know, whatever. But it is a fixed time in God's timing, okay? <clears throat> The proper time or the set time. Okay, so what is the ancient Greek word for future? Okay, because to us it's yesterday, today, tomorrow, right? The future is tomorrow. From any time tomorrow onwards, matcha, right? Not Orion, okay? But Jesus is talking about Orion. For future, the ancient Greek words has only two words for time, which is chronos. Relating, referring to sequential time. Okay, that means this 24 hours now, then tomorrow, another 24 hours after sequence. Okay, uh, Jesus was born 2000 years ago. Now it is the year 2021, and then next year is 2022. Okay, this is chronos. That's where we got the word chronology, right? About the time on this planet Earth. It's the other word for time, which is the word here, all right, in due time. All right, you will be exalted in due time. Humble yourself, all right, and cast all your care. So if we can understand this, there is actually no cares, all right? Okay, kairos. Over here is kairos. Kairos is a moment of indeterminate time in which events happen, all right? So while kairos, a chronos is quantitative, okay? You add another 10 years, become, you know, two zero uh, three one. all right? So and all that is quantitative, it adds, okay? You, your age also adds, right? You are, <laughs> one time you were 10 years old, and then after you add another 20, become 30 years old, and then become 40 years old. So that is the chronological 
time. But Kairos is qualitative and permanent nature. So it is not the, it's not Kronos. When Jesus, when uh, God, when uh, the Bible says that in due time, it is a set time by God's timing. Okay? It is permanent. And it's qualitative, qualitative, not what how we calculate time. So it can happen today, right now, instantly, or to, you know what we call matcha tomorrow. Or because God don't see time the way we see it. It's not just chronos, all right? It's kairos in the mind of God. When He created this world, Earth, right? There were seven days. Time was created by God, but God don't live within time. Otherwise, God is not God already, right? He created time for us to live within Kronos. All right? But he works because he's God and creator. He works outside of Kronos. He works in Kairos, which means there's no such thing as future <laughs> with God. Okay? And when you see this, okay, so uh, in the TPD, uh, in another translation, if you bow low in God's awesome presence, right? That means bow low means I acknowledge Him, right? As more smarter than me, <laughs> greater than me, okay? He will eventually exalt you in, as you leave the timing in His hands. This is the best that English can go, <laughs> English translation, <laughs> to leave the timing in His hands. But just now I already show you the Greek word is kairos. Okay, so it is not chronos, which is chronological time. So pour out your worries and stress. So when you know that God don't see it tomorrow, you know, as a, a, a day thing, a day after today, then what's going to happen to them? He, he says that, you know, that God will take care of everything in his time, not chronos, okay? Kairos, quality, quantity. Okay, uh, quantitative is Kairos, uh, the other one, Kronos. Okay, I think this is, uh, if, if you don't fully understand, you need to listen again. Okay, don't worry. Okay, but if you can catch this, of course, you still need to listen again because this is a revelation that will totally set you free. All right, leave them therefore, he tenderly cares for you. So, Romans 10 says, brothers and sisters, My heart's desire and my prayer to God for Israel is for their salvation. Okay, so remember, for uh, the sake of some of you who are new, right? Okay, the Bible has three groups of people, right? You have the Jews, the Gentile. Gentile is just anyone who's not a Jew. And today, after Jesus died on the cross and rose again, we have the new creation in Christ, which is you and me. And even a Jew, if they have received Jesus, they are born again. They are also new creation. Okay, so... Israel, all right, from the very beginning was God's chosen people. So they know they are God, all right? So, okay, my heart's desire and my prayer for God, uh, to God for Israel is for their salvation, okay? So the gospel went to the Gentiles, okay? After the Jews rejected Jesus as the Messiah. For I testify about them that they have a certain enthusiasm for God, but not in accordance with or correct or vital knowledge about him and his purposes. So the Jews have a zeal, enthusiasm for God, right? So you know about the Jews. They do, they pray all the time. They have their laws, the Torah, right? They have to pray. They have to, you know, a lot of things that they have to do. Okay, so like today, uh, Deuteronomy, to be careful when you read Deuteronomy, right? It's, it's the laws and the curses of disobedience, the blessings of obedience. But today, no one can obey everything there, okay, except Jesus Christ. So what he did was Jesus obeyed all the law because he was sinless and therefore all the blessings now, he don't need it <laughs> because, you know, he is God, right? So the blessings, he gave it to us. We are the beneficiary of Jesus fulfilling every dot and title of the law for the Jews so that today, all, right, all the blessings in Deuteronomy come to you. You have to be the beneficiary, right, in a contract. <laughs> okay, that is the old covenant. Right? You make sure a contract is made, you look at who is the beneficiary. Right? It benefits someone. So we are the beneficiary 
beneficiary to the uh, old covenant actually, but we are actually not, not there also, right? We have a new covenant or rather we are, have a promise, right? We are children of God. That's even more powerful than a covenant, okay? So I'll explain that more later. Okay, so Jesus fulfilled everything. That, so he was, uh, Paul is talking about to the Jews now. I testify about them. They have a certain enthusiasm for God, but not understanding God's purpose. So they don't understand because God sent Jesus. They don't understand. They wanted a physical uh, Messiah quickly come and set the kingdom in Israel. All right, physical one. But Jesus came and then go to the cross. So it makes no sense to them. Therefore, they rejected Jesus and crucified him. But that was God's plan. So that you and me can be born again and today be the sons and daughters of God. For not knowing about God's righteousness, which is based on faith, and seeking to establish their own righteousness based on works. Right? That means I do good, then I get the blessing under the law of the Ten Commandments and all the other sub-commandments of the moral they did not submit to God's righteousness. Remember what Jesus said, right? Seek first or put your uh, what focus what on the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all right? The one that he gave to us by faith, the right standing that he God gave to us, not because of what we do. So the Jews go by their own righteousness. They follow the law. So they have to do good in order to be blessed. But today, this is what grace is all about. We are blessed because we believe Jesus by faith. Okay? So we are righteous not by our good works, but because we, we receive Jesus and put on the, his righteousness, his right standing, he gave it to us as a gift. Okay? Not by works. For you are saved, not by works. Okay? So the Jews did not submit to God's righteousness. They don't know the purpose of God in Jesus coming, the first coming. For Christ is the end of the law. Okay? For Christ is the end of the law. It leads to him. So the law was given to point actually to Christ. Not just for them to do good because they also cannot. That's why they have to have the, the high priest. They have to bring the sacrifice offering. No one could actually fulfill the commandments to the dot because everyone has sinned in the eyes of God. Okay, so Christ ended the law. The law leads to him, to Christ, and his purpose is now fulfilled in him, or rather has been fulfilled in him to, when Jesus came and went to the cross. For granting righteousness to everyone who believes in him as saviour. So what is the purpose of God? That Paul says the Jews cannot, they missed it, right? They thought immediately they want Jesus to come and set up the kingdom here, which he will very soon, all right? Which is in the chronological time of God, all right? That the prophecies, there'll be different times and what's going to happen next is the rapture and the second coming of Jesus. This time, there will be the physical appearing of Jesus Christ, all right, as uh, to the Jews, and the whole world can see. But the, the, uh, the, the spiritual purpose, the Jews couldn't see, all right? So the law was to make men, if they follow, they, they become good with the sacrifice of the lamb and the goat and all that, which actually signified Jesus being our sacrifice. Then, they have the purpose, uh, then they will have blessings upon their lives. You know, when you have blessing, you don't have to worry, right? Okay, so righteousness to everyone who believe in him as savior. This is God's plan and God's purpose, all right? The law to point to us that we cannot by ourselves save ourselves. We cannot become righteous. There's no way. One dot of sin is sin before God. Right? For all, for the wages of sin is that for all have sinned, Romans 3, 23, and come short of the glory of God. Okay, so which means the ultimate purpose of everything that Jesus did and the law is to, for the people to become righteous. 
Isn't it why you obey the law for? <laughs> right? why, why you want uh, to obey your father, tell you, okay, don't do this. So that you can have a right standing with him when you ask for things he will give you, right? If your father tell you, don't do this, and you know something, uh, you know, don't go out so late, come back early. So if you obey that commandment means what? You have right standing if you, with him. If you don't obey, if your father will say, this month, no allowance for you. <laughs> so there is no blessing, right? This law is, was given, all right, uh, we won't go to the detail, but it's there in the Bible, is so that people can attain the favor, the blessings, that they may be righteous, okay? So in their doing, in their actions. But God had a different uh, 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 what, what, uh, meaning to righteousness. No one okay, can, can attain this righteousness by trying to be obedient to the law. The only righteousness that God recognized and accept is his son's righteousness, that right standing, which today comes to us by faith as a gift. It means you cannot work for it. Understand? This is the ultimate of the law. Actually, it points to Jesus. So you understand, it already ended. The purpose of the law already ended in Christ. For the spiritual wealth is in him. Colossians, all right? So for those who are now Paul is talking to the Colossian, uh, the believers in the uh, Colossia, Colossia, I think. Colossia, I think. Okay, for our spiritual wealth is in him. So you want the wealth, everything about God, about, you know, our life in him now is in Christ, like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. So when we receive Jesus, our spirit man was born again, right? It, you know, uh, there was light and we now can communicate with God. So now we just need to know everything, all the treasures. It's just a discovery. <laughs> okay. As you begin to read your manual, all right, which is the Bible, all right, as I begin to understand, all right, through the fivefold ministry, especially the teachers that got put in the church, as well as the Holy Spirit that helps you to understand the word of God. All right. So you will discover. Tre hidden treasures. Treasures are people who go for it, right? Those hidden ones. I forgot all those movies of old time. They, <laughs> they go to the case. <laughs> what is that? Uh, that, that joker, you know, that go to uh, find all the treasures. Huh? All right. So seek and you shall find, right? So not everyone will discover because not everyone wants to go and find out. But if you know today, you are so blessed, all right? And all about you and your inheritance, your blessing, you know, your health, your divine health in Christ is hidden inside the Bible. Just for anyone who wants to know and live in that. Okay? Heaven's wisdom. Oh, we have access to heaven's wisdom. How to, take, how to you know, uh, bring up our children, how to live this life. Even just now, we had one wisdom, right? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, right? Okay, it's about this soul life, all right? And not about the matcha tomorrow. It's about every day we breathe. Okay, so wisdom and endless riches. You will have this wisdom. You'll be speaking wisdom that the world don't understand. When they say, oh, you got this disease, you will surely die. We have the wisdom of God and what Jesus has done. But these stripes, you were healed. And you had access to divine health, divine life and healing. This is what belongs to us. But if you don't, this is hidden inside the word, right? If you are hungry, if you want to discover it, then it's yours. Hidden wisdom and endless riches of what? Revelation, knowledge. It takes some time, right? Okay, to go and dig from this Bible. Sometimes you don't have to dig, right? So God used me to dig and help you all to find <laughs> the treasure. <laughs> okay, so, you, you know, God is so good, all right? But on your own, God has put that desire in your heart to want to know 
nothing more. All the heaven's wisdom. Why you want the world, a world's wisdom? Look at the world's wisdom. Come with pandemic and fear, you know, and all this kind of thing. Kill people, actually, right? Because they tell you uh, life consists in, you know, uh, the job, the food. Jesus said, no, it's in him. Heaven's wisdom says, I'll take care of you. And he will demonstrate it in your life. He really will take care of you and take care of us. Because it's Heavenly Father. Endless riches of revelation knowledge. Can anyone discover, you know, and say that, okay, I already know. Uh, what, uh, John 3, 16, Matthew 6, 31. I also thought I know, right? Until I discovered that the word tomorrow is not about the, the day after today. <laughs> and then, what does it, right? It means just, why is it like this? Jesus said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That means everything already finished. The end already now, here, in Christ, in the air that we breathe. That is the, the hymn that says, this is the air I breathe. Jesus has given us this fresh air, this new life. You remember, there's a verse. In Hebrews 13, 8, that says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> this time I cannot read. <laughs> what did you say? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and... What's that? <laughs> can you unmute and tell me what's that? <laughs> uh, Robert Lowe, I can... Huh? Tomorrow. What? Tomorrow. Oh, are you sure? Okay, I'll give you one minute to go and look at the verse. <laughs> Jesus is the Forever. yesterday, today, and Forever. Forever. Yeah, not tomorrow. <laughs> it's not tomorrow. Okay, it's forever. Meaning what? All right, Jesus already done everything. The end is already in him. There's no more tomorrow chronological tomorrow in the mind of God. That's why your sins are forgiven past, present, and the world calls it future. Actually, it's not future. It's forever. You never see, you know, your sins are forgiven past, present, future in the Bible. It says that your sins are forgiven forever. So for the Old Testament, they have something like future because still talking about chronologically Jesus coming after Jesus come already there is no more future as in chronological which means everything that we are uh, you know we inherit and we have in Christ is finished it's in him he's the end already there is no more a day after tomorrow that you need to think about today he is the great I am. It's yesterday, today, and forever. It should be yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> okay? So it's not yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's yesterday, today, and forever, eternally. So today, yesterday is past already, right? Our past is in Jesus. He is our yesterday, okay? He was, he took, we died with him, all right? We buried with him. That is the, the spirit man. And we rose with him. Right? To what? Forever. Today, he is what you, that's why we just need to know, discover who is he, he, who is he? He is the I am. He is your salvation, he is your healer, he's the one who bless you, he's the one who provides for you today and forever, because there's no chron chronological time in this uh being in him, in the blessings in him. It is done, it is all finished. Jesus came 2000 years ago chronologically, and he did. A complete work finished. Okay, he redeemed us from sin forever. So this past, present, future is now very clear. You know that it is not about chronologically tomorrow. So people say, "Oh, what if I go out and sin tomorrow?" It's, it, you don't know, have a new nature. Okay, it's all it's it's like you. It is done. Your eternal uh, spirit forever. You are saved forever. So today, there is no tomorrow in, in God's eyes. So why do we worry about tomorrow when everything is already done today? Tomorrow is today. The what we call tomorrow is actually today. 
in the eyes of God because there is no uh, distinguish. The future is in Christ. Can you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> if you understand, just not a little bit. <laughs> or else, <laughs> yeah. You understand? So how can we worry about tomorrow? Jesus don't even put the, don't worry about tomorrow. He says, don't worry about the air, the breeze. Take no thought about air. Huh? Which we actually automatically, it's all the, all the time there, right? Have any of you wake up and then think, don't know today got air to breathe or not? <laughs> it's like saying, today, will Jesus be with me? If you don't know what the word of God says, then of course you will worry, right? You will think all these thoughts. That's why we need to know what God, what Jesus has done. So that every so-called morning that we wake up, the, the word of God is nothing will separate me, uh, separate us from the love of God. Not even yourself, not even your mistake. And definitely not sickness, not pain, because Jesus took our pain and sickness on the cross. Okay? So it all ended already. As in the eyes of God, in the time of God. Remember the time Kairos? There is no future. Future got only two words in the Greek. Kairos and what's the other one? Huh? Kronos. That is the words for so-called future. Don't have a chat. Okay? So in the New Testament, right, it's only Kronos and Kairos. A definite set time. But that time is set by God, not the chronological time of Tomorrow as in the day after today. That's why Jesus is the same. Remember, I think Robert Moore will never forget this anymore. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow, joker like you. Okay, to yesterday, today, and I was also thinking, you know, I checked this verse. I didn't give it to you, right? But it's in Hebrews 13. Eight. Yesterday, today, it should be tomorrow, right? The future. But it's no future. The future is already in Christ. Your future and my future, as what we think of the word future, you know, in the days to come, is already ended. And it ended well. It ended in hell. You know, we have divine hell. We have, uh, what do you call, uh, riches. We are rich in Christ. We will never lack. And we never need to worry anymore. Because he is the now God. God is the I am. Whatever you need, I am. The good shepherd. The, the provider, El, El Shaddai, you know, the healer, Jehovah Jai, uh, Rafa. Okay, this is who God is today, now, and tomorrow is today. Every day is a today. Every day is now. Just like the air you breathe. You understand? Are you, and that's why the, the, the verse comes, right? Um, I mean, that the title that the Lord gives me, you know, when I prepare a message, right? Sometimes after doing, I keep on changing the title, right? But then when this title came in, why you will never, never, ever need to worry again about the tomorrow, the matcha <laughs> that we think. Yes, on this earth exists, but in God, in the spiritual realm, does not exist. You know, and then also very funny, right? But just a little, uh, how God, how God this, this, Confirm this title, although I you know what now you're very, very sure that you never never need to worry about tomorrow because there's no tomorrow inside this verse. So how to worry about tomorrow? It's just asking you to worry about air. <laughs> Don't have, right? So that day when I just one minute after I finally chose this title and I thought, wow, this is exactly what it is. Then the, the next minute, I received a message from Joan. <laughs> Very funny. You know, she said, I think I finished, I, I, I did this on maybe Thursday. Right? Then after that, the one minute only, I think about one minute later, uh, after I put the title, then Joan put there, uh, Stephanie, uh, tomorrow, <laughs> she said tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow, you don't need to cook. Uh, I already, uh, you know, I will, I will give you your lunch tomorrow. Tomorrow, you don't need to cook. So I was like, oh, one minute I put this one. Why? You never, never, ever, ever need to worry about tomorrow ever again. And then she put it there. Tomorrow, you don't need to cook. <laughs> so you see, but take care of, of the, the, the matcha tomorrow. <laughs> you see how good our Heavenly Father is? I hope that after this too, this uh, revelation today, there is no more 
soul life, remember, the three types. Any worry in your part? Because how can you worry about something that doesn't exist in the mind of God? Which is what everyone worry about, right? Tomorrow, <laughs> the matcha. So even whatever happens, okay? God is one step ahead. He will work it for our good. All right? As I prepare this message, I also go through a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, persecution where I am. <laughs> okay? But God work it, I believe, for good. Every time, he will allow certain things to happen so that the next thing that is going to happen is something that you know God really wants to bless me. You know, but I because I'm the type who is always very contented, you know, with everything that God has. So I never think of something to, to, to go for something better. But God always do that for me. Okay, so I won't tell you what it is yet. But just want to tell you today that you really, really never ever need to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow doesn't exist in God's mind. It's all about the air we breathe but Jesus is in us. Never leave us, never forsake us, always take care of us, our heavenly Father. <sighs> breathe. <laughs> breathe. All right, Evelyn, go. This is so exciting. You are going into another level of this freedom, you know, where you know, I'll say, I don't know how are the future. He said, my future already arrived. <laughs> In Jesus, the package full of blessings, of help, of healing. Your package arrived in Christ. And every day is today, just like the air you breathe. And just leave everything. The way you breathe in the air without thinking is the way we trust Him, God, without thinking. This soul area, God doesn't want us to take no thought of the air. <laughs> Take no thought of the air. So funny, right? Jesus actually telling them, don't think about the air. And then we are all, for years, I have, you know, still, still cannot get this revelation fully until a few days ago. See how God, good God is for all of you here. He loves you all so much. He loves me. He loves you. He's going to take care of our lives.